Bet Online is your number one source for the NBA Finals and Stanley Cup Finals this season. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slots games. Head to the website today and get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, the game starts here. Hey everyone, welcome to the Believe in OK State podcast. I'm Justin Southwell. Last week I spoke about the offensive expectations for offensive coordinator Casey Dunn. So go check that episode out if you missed it. This week I want to shift the focus to the defensive side. What should we expect from defensive coordinator Brian Nardo in his second year? Like the offensive side of the ball, the defense is returning nearly the entire squad. Something that could have easily been overlooked would be the continuity. Oh yeah, we've got all these guys returning. That doesn't just happen anymore with the transfer portal. I think that speaks to the leadership qualities of Coach Nardo just from the outside looking in. Not only Nardo, but Coach Gundy, Coach Dunn, the players on the team, credit where it's due. But I want to point out Nardo specifically based on the situation, right? As a player, it would be natural to think, who is this guy from Gannon? This isn't who I signed up to play for. This is my third defensive coordinator in three years. All kinds of iterations could contaminate your mind. And that portal is so tempting. So for Nardo to come in and establish relationships, investing in these guys, connecting with them over the past year so that those thoughts have vanished and have been replaced with thoughts of, all right, what's my role here? How can I get better? How can I help my team? That kind of stuff is the foundation to why I believe Nardo was a good hire and why I think we'll see an improvement from last year to this year. So let's dive into what OSU looked like on defense last year. According to NCAA stats, OSU ranked 122nd in total defense in 2023. CFBstats.com has them ranked at 125th in the country. Either way, this is a far cry from being ranked fourth in total defense under Jim Knowles in 2021. But it might not be as bad as it sounds. Bear with me through some painful stats, and we'll get there. The 2023 squad ranked dead last by giving up 6,185 total yards, and they surrendered 441.8 yards per game, which ranked last in the Big 12. Still with me? Hang on. Opponents were able to rush 120 times for first downs and converted 145 first downs through the air. They were disciplined, and only gave up 15 first downs via penalty, but I'm sure any coach would tell you that number needs to be zero. So that's a grand total of 280 first downs against the Pokes. For sake of comparison, Penn State only allowed 181 first downs. So it's possible, maybe not probable, but it's possible that OSU could limit opponents to 100 Fewer first downs this year. How amazing would that be? According to NCAA stats, OSU ranked 99th in the country in third down conversion percentage, with opponents converting 82 out of 196 third down attempts. That's 42%. This is one area of improvement I think we will need to see to win more games this season. It doesn't always directly correlate with wins because you can look at the prior season with Derek Mason as the defensive coordinator where we ranked second in the nation in third down conversion percentage with 27.2%. 
we went seven and six that year. And you know the story. Tons of injuries, offensive struggles, just a mess. Third down conversion percentage is just one aspect. Okay, OSU ranked 118th in total defense that year. But the year before that, in 2021, led by Jim Knowles, they ranked second in the nation in third down conversion percentage with 28.4%. And in 2020, they were first in the nation with 26.6%. To compare to some conference opponents in 2023, Texas was second in the nation on third down conversion percentage with 26.6%. Kansas State was 11th with 30%. OU was 14th with 31%. Then there's a large gap. You have to go all the way down to 39th for Iowa State, and they're 36%. Utah, by the way, ranked 8th with 29.5% if you want to add newcomers to this analysis. So again, third down conversion percentage doesn't directly correlate with winning, but it enables you to have a much better shot. Why? Because your opponent isn't scoring touchdowns and you're putting the ball back in your offensive hands to try to score. Other areas of improvement that we need to watch out for would be the pass rush. OSU had 27 sacks in 14 games last season, accounting for 1.93 sacks per game on average. If you get that up into the 34 to 35 sack range, you're looking at being a top 25 to top 15 in the country. One more sack per game puts you at 41. And that would launch you into the top 10. Easier said than done. And the games OSU lost last year, they accounted for seven QB hurries, averaging 1.75 per game. And the games OSU won, they had 30, an average of three per game. Elite defenses can usually get twice as many on average. The pressure isn't abysmal by any means osu achieved 83 tackles for loss last season which was tied with alabama for 46th best in the nation at 5.9 tackles for loss per game although alabama was ranked uh, top 15 in sacks with 39 but if osu can boost that up to around 7.4 tackles for loss per game they'll earn a top 10 spot in the category next season. I'm confident this will improve with what we're hearing about Colin Oliver shifting into a defensive end type of role. But is that too lofty of an expectation coming from a 3-3-5 scheme? I don't know. We can compare to a different conference opponent in Iowa State. Again, these standalone defensive statistics don't directly correlate to wins and losses because you have to take all three phases of the game of football into account. But for the sake of comparing 3-3-5 defenses, Iowa State had 59 QB hurries, 4.5 per game, compared to OSU's 37. The Cyclones had 63 passes broken up, 4.8 per game, compared to the Cowboys' 31, 2.2 per game. Iowa State gave up 5.22 yards per play and allowed 33 touchdowns. OSU gave up 6.48 yards per play and 50 touchdowns. Statistically speaking, that's the difference between being ranked 50th and 122nd in total defense. Combine our offense with a top 50 defense. How many wins do you think that equates to? Last year, Texas ranked ninth in offense and 34th in defense, and they made it to the four-team playoff in a 12-win season. I believe that we have the talent and depth that could produce a top 10 offense and a top 40 defense. But these are big leaps. 
So what should the expectations be? Where did the Cowboys excel last year? And fourth down conversions. Opponents tried to convert 25 times against OSU last season. The disrespect. And they were only able to convert six times. That's just 24%, which was second best in the rankings nationally. But when you look at the number of attempts, it really should be number one. Western Michigan claimed the top spot, but they only had 10 attempts against them. Again, OSU had 25. You'd think the analytics guys on the other sidelines would have picked up on this trend. Another area they improved was tackling. Missed tackles were a big issue early in the season, and seemingly overnight, they tightened it up. Nick Martin finished with 140 total tackles and 83 solo tackles, good enough for number six and number three, respectively, overall in the nation. Nardo has the benefit of working with an all-American caliber talent in the middle of that defense. Let's also keep an eye on Justin Wright, the transfer from Tulsa, whose 2023 campaign was cut short by injury. Nardo's second half adjustments were noticeable last season. First half points equaled 240. Second half points totaled 153, a difference of 44%. 26 of the 28 second half quarters were 10 points or less. 10 of those were three points or less, shutting out the opponent seven times. Maybe another way to look at this would be first half points per game versus second half points per game. And those averages come out to 17.1 first half points and 10.9 points per half. The 28.07 points per game total could drop to 21 points per game if they consistently achieved those second half averages, which would be good enough for a top 25 to 35 range. That's what Kansas State was able to achieve last year. One measure of a defense that I think is maybe overlooked is how the team performs against the averages of the opponents. There are a lot of stats that you can consider for this, but today I'm going to just look at points per game. For example, OU ranked fourth in the nation with 41.7 points per game. OSU held them to 24 points nearly 18 points under their average. Here's a chart of all the games from last year. In seven games, OSU was able to hold opponents below their average points per game, and each of those instances resulted in a win. Based on this, it kind of looks like the defense ran out of gas in the last few games, then got rested up for a bowl game. Let's not forget about the great equalizer in football, turnovers. Turnovers won us at least a couple of games last year. Kansas State and BYU certainly come to mind. That's the difference between nine regular season wins and seven. Right there. Turnovers. Look at these team stats from the BYU game. OSU essentially dominated in every category, but... BYU was able to stay in the game because of two interceptions by us. Luckily, we forced and recovered two fumbles, one being at a crucial moment to seal the victory in overtime. Two points here. One, they're less likely to be in a position to win if we don't turn the ball over. And two, we probably don't win unless we get that last turnover. One thing I can't figure out is the secondary. The major key here is eliminating explosive plays. A ton of these statistics that I just rattled off look much more impressive if not for the explosive plays given up by the secondary. And not to say these guys aren't good. 
we've seen what Kendall Daniels is capable of. Corey Black only allowed 16 receptions last year, according to PFF, which was number three among all FBS cornerbacks with at least 350 coverage snaps. But that's the thing about explosive plays. Sometimes one play is all it takes. Any miscommunication on assignments or a complete lack of understanding can make even the worst offensive teams look good. Yeah, I'm talking about Iowa State. The same Iowa State that scored 13 points on Iowa and just seven against Ohio dropped 34 on the Cowboys. I hate talking about it, but y'all should probably be bullied for that. I'm not going to bully you because all I did was speak facts. But hey, sometimes the truth hurts. And we don't even get a chance for a revenge game against them this year. Same for every one of our losses, actually. Unless something shakes out in the Big 12 championship game and or the playoffs. I want to give credit to Buffalo K State for this tweet. It's a lot, and I'm going to put it on the screen side by side. So it's all there to see if you're watching on YouTube. Speaking of, go ahead and leave a like for the editing efforts here. Subscribe if you think OSU is going to win more than seven and a half games. All right, here's the tweet. Jim Knowles, defense, year one at Oklahoma State, 2018. Points per game, 32.46. Rush yards per game, 185.4. Pass yards per game. 267.08 total touchdowns 55 total points 422 year 2 2019 points per game 26.77 rush yards per game 158.5 pass yards per game 253.85 total touchdowns 43 total points 348 they were able to improve in every category the following tweet shows Brian Nardo defense year one at Oklahoma State 2023 points per game 28.57 rush yards per game 166.8 pass yards per game 275 total touchdowns 52 total points 400 somewhat similar first years lots of variables lots of factors that come into play here but it's noteworthy to see the first year and establish some realistic goals and expectations for year two. I just brought up Nardo's second half adjustments. What about his second season adjustments? Similar to how Dunn doesn't run a spread option with Bowman like he did with Spencer Sanders. Nardo has a better understanding of the personnel that he's working with. He has a better understanding of each of their strengths. That's why we might be seeing more of Daniels in a linebacker type of role, an Oliver in an edge type of role. He has his scheme and concepts to implement, but how can it be tweaked to get the most out of the talent that we have available? That's what I'm excited about and why I believe this defense will see a significant leap in statistics this upcoming season. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Believe in OK State podcast presented by Bet Online. Remember, all things are possible for the one who believes. <laughs>